Ah, it's a beautiful day outside. Let's build. Welcome back, my friend, to another edition of Check 6 Aviation, Builder Edition, where we're tackling getting together the workspace, the future workspace of the RV-10 build project. Uh, we're, what I'm doing here is I am I'm getting some lumber together to install what's called a California corner on the back wall. I'm also going to be doing this to the side walls as well, uh, in addition to the, the front door space. Um, but what the California corner is, is it's uh, an additional piece of lumber on the inside portion. It gives the drywall something to bite onto. Safety is always paramount, so wear the proper protection. So here we go. We're good. Yeah, got the first piece up there. Uh, checking for the fit, uh, not realizing. Hey, you forgot that you had already cut both California corners for the back wall. Uh, you, you'll see me off frame here. You, I've got a sander that's on the porch, a, be um, a, uh, uh, a belt and disc sander machine. So I'm kind of making sure that everything is square to get in to you know, making sure that it fits because uh, as always with any build project measure twice cut once I have built or I have made a lot of firewood you see the pit the fire pit down in the lower left corner there <laughs> and Trust me, I will be making more firewood as this process goes forward. So as I'm running around here, here's the, the California corner as it is finished. You know, that's what it looks like. So uh, nailing everything down, getting everything together. Uh, I was considering breaking this video up into uh, a couple different videos, but then I decided at the last minute today just to go ahead and put it all together, make it one video, get it all done. Um, and I still have the the uh, uh, bracing in in between the studs to do for the back wall. I've got to do. I think I've got the bra the stud bracing uh, done for the side walls already shown here. But uh, I'm doing, I'm putting in the California corner on the other side so that, like I said, it's all about the drywall. I'm thinking two steps ahead, three steps ahead, um, you know, making sure that, uh, that this build project goes as smooth as possible because the tail kit is now paid for and I'm just waiting on it to be crated and shipped. Uh, I, I'm estimating sometime in the middle to end of October, maybe early November, I don't know. It's all up to Vans Aircraft at this point. And by the way, I did tour Vans Aircraft. If you haven't seen that video yet, follow the link that is on the top right corner and that will take you to it. Uh, as I see here, is what I'm doing here is I, I, had, I had the the between stud bracing done on one of the walls but not the other one so yeah you see that I've got all the bracing done for the back wall on the right and the uh, looks like I've got yes I, I have not put in the window yet the, the, the window frame on, on that wall but I did do that I didn't film it I apologize uh, but uh, I got a little bit, I was at a mind, in the mindset at that time that, hey, listen, I've only got a limited amount of time uh, to before I have to go back out on the road and participate in the supply chain that is our is the lifeblood of our nation's economy. So I wanted to go ahead and get as much done that I had uh, after filming before having to go back out. So, um, but anyway, uh, I also, if you want to see the what where we're at currently then there's another video that I 
have that I made a quick update just before leaving for Oshkosh. Oh, speaking of Oshkosh, I'm going to have another video coming out in the near future about my experiences there and a, a lot of cool products that uh, I saw at in the hangars during for the the product vendors section. And let me tell you, there were a lot. So cutting some, yeah, cutting the bracing here for the, the finish off the, the the other wall. Even though I'm using a nail gun, I'm also using screws because, yeah, well, except for the, the bracing. The bracing is is just there for, for vertical support so that the, the studs don't move a whole lot. But what I would do for the studs themselves uh, to the, the upper and lower bore, you know, upper and lower plates is I would do two, two nails on either end of the stud and a screw in the middle to give it a little bit extra bite because, well, the nails that are, that are in this nail gun, um, they're not like the driven nails. They, they will come out um, very easily, to, much to my chagrin and dismay, uh, but it's, it's all fixable. So. Now the the stud the the bracing spacing is done at three foot and four foot from the bottom, and that was a little tip that I got from another YouTube video on, on basic framing tips. At, at first, I didn't think I needed this, needed to do all that, but my wife, she said, "Yeah, this is the way you do it." It's kind of an old school technique. It's not really necessary, but it it does add a little bit of structural support and of course up and over and now it is on to fabricating the front wall the, the door frames and you got basically just a, a, a couple L's that I'll have to move a whole bunch of lumber right there by my uh, by my nail gun, which not a problem. Um, I do have kind of an oops coming up where I made a whole bunch of firewood and I'll talk about that here in a moment. But there is the, I'm using the, the deck as a template for the, for the length, for the width. Now, this is actually the beginning of day three. This is the morning of day three. You see the sun's kind of low on the horizon. Uh, the girls had just been taken to school and I got out there because let's face it, it's Texas, it was hot. It was in the middle of June and it was, it was blazing hot in the, in the midday. And here I had an oops, you know, another a different kind of another different oops. The outside, the outer two, Support uh, support braces uh, were a little bit too long. They were like maybe a sixteenth or an eighth inch too long, and I had to nail them, you know, to knock them out. And in order to get them in line with the length of the the middle three, and of course I, I you know, was pounding out the nails. And let me tell you, I wish that I had Mr. Miyagi because, uh, as you see here in the inset, yeah. Uh, uh, this is, uh, I was actually having a little bit of an issue with getting them 
out getting those nails out but eventually persistence prevailed and success ensued it was ensured now here I've got you know nail gun in hand uh, I've tried screwing in those those braces uh, but the Torx bit I've gone through so many Torx bits in the process that you know because what they'll do is they'll they'll get worn down and they'll start stripping the screw and I'll have to go run to Lowe's or Home Depot or whichever uh, and get a brand new one um, because well my my uh, my drill isn't one of those impact drills and here is a mistake in three, two, one. I'm picking up that board and I'm laying it on the bottom of the uh, the foot, so it's not like where the the bottom board of the foot itself for that column is sandwiched in between. And I realize that here in a moment. But the reason why this is a big oops is because it really determines the width of the intermediate bracing for the column so I basically cut eight pieces of bracing to the exact same size then realize that hey I should have put it somewhere else you know they should be longer because I'm going to move the board Here you'll see me creating, uh, taking them over to the fire pit and just starting over because no matter what you're building, there's always going to be an oops. It's not, darn, I had an oops, what do I do now? It's how you overcome it. It's you, it's you going forth and continuing on real, and forgiving yourself for messing up and just moving forward and soldiering on. And there is the massive realization of what I did wrong. And so there's the correction. Basically, all I did was I, I went ahead and uh, marked, you know, put it up against the the top of the door frame itself, and marked it on the underside. There's everything going into the fire pit. And starting from scratch. These are all primarily scrap pieces at this point. And that yeah, I'm just trying to reuse, you know, use as much of the scrap as possible. I think that is what any job site would do to cut down on costs. Because at this point, lumber was still sky high. It's still expensive. It has come down, but it is still expensive. I just dropped 400 bucks on plywood to use as the outside sheathing for the walls. It is currently Thursday, September 30th, the last day of September, as I'm recording this voice over for this video and this uh, this Saturday I'm going to be not only sheathing the walls but I've got another oops that I'm correct I've got there's always going to be oopses <laughs> always going to be mistakes that I'm correcting uh, and I know that there are going to be mistakes even on the RV10 when I do get it
coming up this Saturday, I'm going to be yeah, sheathing up the exterior walls with plywood and wrapping the whole project in Tyvek and installing the wall, the, the window permanently. But I've got another oops that I've got to fix. I'll explain that in the beginning of the next video in this series. I've got another series that I've started called, uh, it's called Check Six Visits, where I'm going to be going and visiting a whole bunch of, of yeah, manufacturers, Vans Aircraft being the first one. Uh, I want to go ahead and get over to Stein Air. The people over there are great. They make excellent panels uh, to your specifications. I love their, the back of their t-shirt that says, we're not happy until you're broke. And if you've ever looked at the price of avionics, you will understand what they mean because this stuff ain't cheap. It's aviation, what can I say? Yes, it's experimental. But think, I'm thanking God that it is not certified because that is uber expensive. So at this point, we're just go ahead and going ahead and making the other four support uh, horizontal support pieces for the other wall for the other side of the door frame. And marking everything at 16 inches on center. And at this point, I'm looking at in the wood pile that's standing up for a suitable piece and have of course found it and off the excess goes And let me tell you, it's a pain to be to be working with only one extension cord for this project. <laughs> one extension cord, two power tools. I'm always switching back and forth with what what is plugged into the extension cord. Just about done, and I have a bit of a a locking interface between the four walls with the bottom plate and, the, and the, the top plate and I will show that to you guys on the next video as well in this series. So that's about it for this edition of Check 6 Aviation. I really appreciate you watching and by all means if you support, if you you know, like aviation or building content, give this channel a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. It helps the YouTube algorithm uh, know that this video needs to be shared far and wide. And if you wish to support us beyond that, then visit our Patreon page and consider signing up to be one of our Patreons. Uh, visit our other in, our other social media feeds: Facebook, Instagram. Tumblr. I'm going to be posting more on Tumblr, but Instagram is full of other things that I've come across, uh, and especially from AirVenture. And with that, we bid you peace, and always, always check your six. Bye for now.